The Chicago Bears made a big acquisition at the trade deadline, but the New Orleans Saints are hoping to just stay consistent. We got all that and a little bit of land yet for you on this Crossover Thursday edition of Locked on Saints. You are Locked on Saints, your daily New Orleans Saints podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is good, Huda Nation and Huda family? Welcome in to another episode of Locked on Saints, your daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you, as always, to all you everydayers out there making Locked on Saints your first listen of the day every day. Don't forget, you can subscribe and follow always for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you never miss the latest episodes. And if you want to keep the conversation going, take part in our exclusive film studies, Q&A, breaking news, and much more, you can become a Locked on Saints insider today by heading over to joinsubtext.com slash Locked on Saints to join a community I would love for you to be a part of. As always, I am your host, Ross Jackson, at Ross Jackson Nola on your favorite social media, your New Orleans Saints expert, credential member of the media, Saints News Network, Tuesdays on the Locked on NFL podcast, and here with you every single Monday through Friday on Locked on Saints. And today is our crossover Thursday edition, joined by Lauren Cox of Locked on Bears. We're going to be breaking down this matchup for you. Don't forget that this crossover Thursday episode is brought to you by our friends at Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL today and use promo code in all lowercase locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. On this Crossover Thursday edition, we're going to be taking a look at uh, what each of these teams need to do if they want to get a win on Sunday. We'll give you our predictions as well. We'll be taking a look at the matchups that can decide this game. But to get us started, let's talk the biggest story in each market, starting with the visiting Chicago Bears. Yeah, I mean, the trade deadline was actually exciting for Chicago. I don't know about you guys. I think it was a little little more boring down there. I heard there were some rumblings (laughs) about stuff maybe. Yeah, there's a little Hunter, little, little Hunter Renfro conversation that may or may not have happened. It happened, but didn't really go anywhere. Yeah, they, they made as much, much, about as much progress there as the Bears did with Jalen Johnson, right? You dabble, you make yeah. some tough calls, <laughs> ultimately uh, end up staying pat. And, and that's kind of the, the big story is both who came in and also who didn't leave. So, of course, mm-hmm. Montez Sweat coming over from the Washington Commanders for a second round pick. Instantly the best player on the Chicago Bears defensive line, a huge upgrade at at the biggest area of weakness anywhere on the team. The defensive line, mainly in the pass rush department, they've been pretty good stopping the run even without Montez, and Montez is pretty good in that area, but particularly they need him to come in and be a more consistent edge rusher than they've gotten from Unique Ngakwe and the rest of that group up front there and should be ready to go, ready to roll this week. He he already comes in as the Bears' leading sack sack leader, tackles, (laughs) forced fumbles, etc. I mean, without even having played a snap on this team just yet. So he's going to be big, and then, Jalen Johnson continues to be a Chicago Bear despite requesting a trade. Mm-hmm. And the general manager yesterday kind of go into public negotiations at a press conference and kind of say, yeah, listen, we weren't done negotiating when he requested a trade. We were surprised. Wait a minute. We, we haven't even exchanged final offers yet. Like we don't, we don't even know how far apart we are. So oh, wow. a lot of just on top of their running backs coach being fired for workplace conduct issues under HR. So there's like a whole right, swirl right. of things going on around this team right now. And they're supposed to play the Saints in a few days. Yeah, um, yeah, a lot less eventful over here in New Orleans, that's for sure. Uh, The New Orleans Saints did not make any moves at the trade deadline. And in fact, the thing that they're hoping for is that everything stays the exact same. They want no changes, nothing to change from what they did last week against the Indianapolis Colts, where they put up over 30 points and over 500 yards for the first time. And I think it was Christmas Day 2020 against the Minnesota Vikings when Alvin Kamara ran for like six touchdowns in that game, the Alvin Kamara game, if you will. Uh, And so for the Saints, it's kind of the opposite, right? Like they're trying to see if they can maintain consistency. What we've seen from this New Orleans Saints team over and over again is that they'll like win a game and look really good doing it. And then they'll drop two games and they'll win a game and look really good doing it, drop two games, all that. So they're kind of trying to keep the trajectory going in the right direction uh, when it comes to uh, what they did last week against Indianapolis and now shaping up to go against Chicago. Yeah, you know, there are some similarities between the Bears and the Colts in terms of, you know, backup quarterback in place of injured, exciting, athletic young quarterback, one of the worst defenses in football on both sides and with really good running game. Like there is a certain level of like, that's certainly not the same schemes by any means, but the same kind of game plan again, right? I mean, we'll get into more specifics, but it's like 
yeah, you should be able to score on this defense and presumably shut down the opposing team's running game and dare this quarterback to beat you with his arm? You're not going to trick me into comfort, my friend. It's not happening. I think that, like, no, that, you, you're absolutely right. I mean, the 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 Chicago Bears, I believe, are the 30th ranked uh, defense against the pass right now, which is kind of the big thing that the New Orleans Saints are trying to keep going. But, look, they just ran for over 160 yards against the Indianapolis Colts as well, who, by all intents and purposes, were a, a top 10 run defense. So they found a way to, to kind of get it going in their mix of Jamal Williams and Kendra Miller and Alvin Kamara the three running backs, and of course, Taysom Hill, the, I don't know, the football player uh, that does <laughs> everything, right? Uh, he was such a big asset for them in this game too. But I think that what Saints fans are kind of feeling right now going into this game against the Chicago Bears is like, don't let up. Treat this team like they are an elite team that you're about to go up against, which is what every NFL team wants to do anyway. And to make sure that the Saints don't stand in their own way because they do have a bad habit of like seeing a Taysom Hill game where everybody goes, oh, they figured it out. They use Taysom Hill the right way. And in the very next game, Taysom Hill sees like six snaps. And so like these or six touches. And these are kind of the, the things that plague the New Orleans Saints is getting too cute after a win. So hopefully they can keep themselves uh, from doing that going into this. one. Yeah, I, I was still taken aback. You got to treat treat them like an elite opponent. I, I haven't treat heard like that an elite opponent. Got to do it. It's not, <laughs> not what this team has been, but you know, I, I think because the Bears have the two wins and they're not impressive wins, but two wins nonetheless, like that, that doubt is in the back of your mind, right? They're like, well, could we be the next team that just absolutely blows it against the Chicago Bears? Because most teams, and when we do these crossovers, it's like, can the Bears be the get right game for my franchise? And then, and for a lot mm. of teams, it has been, but for Washington, it wasn't. And I think, you know, for, for the Raiders a couple weeks ago, I mean, with, with Brian Hoyer, that wasn't, quite viewed as a get right game it was a can we survive <laughs> game and clearly yeah. Josh Daniels and uh, Dave Ziegler did not survive I mean they made it one more game but so so I think that for the most part you shouldn't have too much to be worried about I mean we'll get into we'll get into matchups and stuff here in a little bit but this feels to me like boy if the Saints can just stay out of their own way the Bears will yeah. lose for you you know what I mean if you just if you don't hand it to Chicago on a silver platter you should be fine but it sounds yeah. like maybe New Orleans hasn't been good enough at that aspect of football it's been the getting in their own way part of it and and there's a lot of reason for hope and there's a lot of reason for optimism that they've turned it around based upon the way that they competed and played against the indianapolis Colts in a game where they didn't just steamroll in a game where it wasn't just like one heroic effort by by one individual player it was a full team win they had to manage some adversity it was all there uh but you just want to see them not get in their own way and that that becomes a big thing let, let me ask you this before we get to matchups um with the arrival of Montez Sweat, how much do you think the Bears are going to be putting him out on the field uh, six days, seven days, or, or five, six days after he arrived in Chicago? I, I mean, I, I don't know that it's going to be full bore, but I think they're mm -hmm. coming in thinking, yeah, he can plug and play here pretty quickly into a major role, right? I mean, he's been yeah. relatively healthy all season. It's not like there, I mean, there are certainly scheme aspects of things in terms of specific calls and you know what do we call this what do we call that and, and how do we fit up certain run plays but like for the most part he should be able to plug and play here pretty quickly I think in the past when they've been able to they've had to bring in new guys in the defensive line they've been able to get them in as early as like the next week like guys that have been called up from the practice squad or guys that are signed as free agents during last season like it's maybe not a you know a full every snap kind of role but like I would expect him to be a starter and still play quite a bit. And they, they like to rotate their defensive line to keep them fresh anyway. So we'll see yeah. what, whether like he leads the team, the D line in snaps, maybe not, but I think he will be a prominent member here. And in any kind of passing situation, it's just, all right, Montez, you go out there, you're rushing versus the right tackle. Go get him. Yeah. Yeah. That seems to make the most sense. And so he'll be matching up with uh new Orleans saints, right tackle, Ryan Ramchick, who probably just played his best game of the season last week against Indianapolis. So good timing for saints fans. They are Yannick and Gakwe over on the opposite side. So can the saints keep those guys at bay in those obvious pass rushing situations? I think the saints have allowed the major, like the vast majority of their sacks on third down. So Montez sweat would obviously be a very big factor on those obvious passing down situations, I assume. Yeah, I, certainly the Bears like to use some of their positional versatility in those third down situations as well. Go with multiple defensive ends, kicking inside the defensive tackle and trying to get mm -hmm. just their four best pass rushers. They've got some different guys with some size. I mean, all four of these defensive ends are, are bigger guys that can kick inside and they can. And, that, and that's where we've seen Matty Merflus like slowly integrate the blitz a little bit more. He's not mm -hmm. a bunch guy at all, but 
third downs when they've realized how inconsistent their pass rush has been. It's like, all right, we got to bring guys somewhere. Let's start bringing some pass rushers. But having a couple injuries in the back seven makes that a little bit more challenging too is going into this week, depending on who's going to be out there and who isn't. Absolutely. And speaking of that back seven, we're going to be taking a look at matchups. And that back seven in Chicago comes into play big time, but so will the New Orleans Saints defense as well. So we got that coming up for you as we continue on with this crossover edition of Locked on Bears and Locked on Saints. Here is a part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. This crossover Thursday podcast is brought to you by our friends at DoorDash, the best way to get all of your favorites delivered right to your door. First of all, it's super handy for groceries, especially leading up to kickoff on game day. Everyone's trying to get the grocery store before kickoff, but you can have DoorDash bring your groceries for you even after the game or before the game to make sure that you're you're at home, you're ready to go, and your food is ready to go with you. But if you get to halftime or after the game and you're hungry for a meal, DoorDash is also a great way to get all of your favorite local restaurants delivered right to your door. It doesn't even have to be a meal either. I was just looking at DoorDash around the Chicago area. There's a bakery called Levain Bakery, and they've got a full banana chocolate chip loaf. It's an excellent way for everyone to find a little bit of what they want, whether you're going for the sweet side or the spicier side. DoorDash has all of your favorites. And right now you can get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order when you download the DoorDash app and enter in our promo code LOCKED23. Subject to change, terms apply. Again, don't forget that code LOCKED23 for 50% off up to a $10 value on your first order when you download the DoorDash app and spend $15 or more. All right, everybody, continuing on with this crossover Thursday edition, Lauren Cox of Locked on Bears, Ross Jackson of Locked on Saints here. So, Lauren, uh, we looked at the biggest story for both of these teams. Now, for the everydayers out there, we appreciate you making us your first listen of the day every day, by the way, uh, or making us your first listen of the, uh, of the day. Uh, but for the everydayers out there, now let's take a look at the matchups, right? This is always kind of the, 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 the part that everybody gets super excited about. What are the matchups that are going to decide this game? How are you looking at it between the Bears and Saints? Yeah, for me, it's 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 not like a specific like this one player versus this one player, but it's sort of like a, a little bit of a grouping here where mm-hmm. saw last week against the Chargers, the Bears could not tackle particularly Austin Eckler after the catch. He, he set a season like season high for most yards after the catch in the first half that any players had all season in the NFL. It was like 110 yards after the catch in the first just the first half because <laughs> the Bears yes. could not tackle him. And so when you've got somebody on the other side like Alvin Kamara who Mm -hmm. is great both as a runner making guys miss, but also as a receiver after the catch. That's a really big concern. Plus, Jamal Williams is not easy to tackle. Taysom Hill is not easy to tackle. And for the Bears, it's not like it's just been one culprit. Like, it's been kind of across the board. I was looking through, uh, my favorite missed tackles horse is PFF, but other people track it too. The Bears' three leading missed tacklers, Tremaine Edmonds, TJ Edwards, Jack Sanborn, they're three linebackers. They're leaders leaders in missed tackle percentage, like percentage of tackle attempts that are missed, like as a a Mm -hmm. rate. Uh, all four of your defensive ends, Yannick Ngakwe, Demarcus Walker, Rasheem Green, Dominique Robinson. So it's the ends and the linebackers that are missing these tackles. And then their backup safety, Elijah Hicks, is kind of the other culprit. But like you think most of the time it's like, oh, we want to run at their corners, make their cornerbacks tackles because corners don't like to tackle. It's the opposite on the Bears. Their corners are physical tacklers who love to bring guys down. But it's the linebackers and really the edge rushers that are really struggling to finish plays and get guys to the ground. And that's what I'm worried about against the Saints. That's big. That's really, really big, especially with the Saints' dedication to their run game. Again, they just ran for over 160 yards last week against Indianapolis, and that's such a big part of it is getting past the the sort of yards after contact, right? Trying to get through that first layer of contact, get to the second levels, all of that. So it's definitely a big one to be watching. And by the way, the Saints have had a history of missed tackle issues as well. And no, I'm not talking about that playoff game. I'm talking about in the recent past here. And so when I think about where the Saints are with that last week, they only missed four tackles as a defense. I'm fairly certain all four of them were on the same play. Um, (laughs) Jonathan Taylor just kind of bull rushing through the entirety of the Saints defense on that one play. But they've done a good job kind of um, getting the discipline there in terms of tackling. So this is going to be a big one to watch because we've also seen the Saints give up a lot of yardage to opposing players and I know that the Bears offense, I imagine, has benefited from that against certain teams as well, right? Here and there, it, mm. it, it, it all comes in spurts. That's the thing, right? Yeah. It's not a consistent, I mean, it's not a consistent offense in general, but like when they've had their big success, 
you know, largely against the Washington Commanders and then and then like the Raiders. But in some of their games where DJ Moore goes off, like he is a yak machine. He makes a couple of guys miss and runs down the sideline yep. for for uh, for a good you know hundred plus yards. And I imagine you might remember some of that from his time in Carolina. Is that what is that what caught your attention? That that's a hundred percent what made me gasp uh, was because <laughs> because DJ Moore when he was in Carolina was always good for a 75 yard touchdown pass or a 60 yard touchdown pass catch and run kind of thing, whatever it was, he was always that guy and Carolina would oftentimes lose those games to new Orleans, but there was always just that one irksome big downfield DJ Moore shot. So I expect the DJ Moore big play to happen at some point in this game. Maybe it doesn't, be, you know, maybe it's not a game winner. Maybe it's not something that decides the game, whatever it might be. But I expect at least at, if you've got DJ Moore on your fantasy team, start him. Like there is just something about the Superdome, something about the New Orleans Saints to where every game he gets one. You know, it's it's tricky because I mean the Bears desperately need him to. And I and I feel mm-hmm. like there, there's a certain aspect of this where it's like when you know the Bears are trying to get it to him short and let him make plays after the catch, that like you don't have that as much of that threat of other ways that they're going to beat you that that becomes almost like harder to to win that way like it's one thing when okay when it's justin fields out there and we got to watch for his legs and his downfield passing in his arm and like okay how are they going to beat us all these ways and then it's like oh crap we weren't prepared enough to tackle dj Moore. but when it's tyson bajant who who can throw it downfield he's just not Mm -hmm. nearly the dynamic playmaker that that justin was and and just hasn't shown as much of a propensity to be a, a deep shot guy like He's a quick rhythm passing underneath guy who's smart and good anticipation takes care of the ball. But like then everyone is keying in on, OK, he's going to throw it short. Let him catch it. Make the tackle like everybody is. There's nothing else for them to be thinking about. It's like, OK, his field's going to scramble with it. Is, is this guy going to blow my beat? Like there's there's less on the defense's plate there to set somebody like DJ Moore up. And we, he's we got about 50 yards a game the last three games in a row after a couple of huge games prior to that. So either you could say he's due against the, a, a team like the Saints that he's done it against Don't before it. or, or th- this might just be the trend right now of, Hey, this offense has some real limitations here. They're going to kind of slow things down, run the ball and not have as many of those explosive plays built in. Yeah. Yeah. Tackling at the catch point is going to be huge in this game. I imagine for both sides Um, for the saints. I think the thing that I'm really looking at is like coverage versus pass catchers. And that can be Chicago's coverage versus the saints pass catchers or vice versa. I think for new Orleans, like they're trying to build an identity with what they can do through the air. And they certainly did a good job of that last week. Rashid Shahid, the guy, the wide receiver that nobody talks about outside of New Orleans most of the time because they're paying attention to understandably big names like Michael Thomas and Chris Olave. Rashid Shahid had three catches for 153 yards for a, a, and a touchdown uh, last week against Indianapolis. Three 40 plus yard uh, receptions downfield, including one of which that was contested. He had like that Randy Moss stat line where he's smiling and looking into the camera on the sideline, all that kind of stuff. And so, you know, you, you, you look at what Rashid Jaheed can do, you, you need that to be available. And I know that Chicago's dealing with injuries and Jaquan Brisker is still in that sort of concussion protocol and all that. Brisker, by the way, a guy that I love for New Orleans, he got taken one pick before the Saints landed Alante Taylor a couple of years ago, worked out fine for New Orleans, but really loved Jaquan Brisker. Um, but I think that like that becomes a big thing. And then over on the opposite side of it, it's the Saints ability to cover, which is something that I'm really, really confident in. So, you know, I make a lot of jokes about like, don't treat this like a game that's going to be so easily given over to the New Orleans Saints. Saints have to get out of their way and stuff like that. But the things that I think will decide this game are the things that New Orleans has been good at all season. As long as they can score when they get into the red zone, they haven't had any issue moving the ball within the 20 yard lines. They do that a lot with the passing game. I think with Justin Fields out with Khalil Herbert now, not a part of this uh, offense, that or, or the Chicago offense, the run game kind of gets mitigated there. So it's going to force Chicago to go through the air. So the defense and the back end of the defense for New Orleans has to do their job and what could be a one dimensional Chicago Bears offense to, you know, be able to force some mistakes and take advantage of them if they can. I wouldn't be so confident in a one dimensional Chicago Bears offense. Oh, I don't, really? That's not to say that I think the Bears offense is going to be dynamic and score a lot of points. Sure, sure. But- they love to run the ball, and they're very confident in their ability to do so, even without Khalil Herbert. Dante Foreman, another former Carolina Panther, has been running very well this season. Roshan Johnson is back from injury. The rookie from Texas has been a, mm-hmm. a, a nice weapon for them. They didn't run the ball super well last week against the Chargers because they let the Chargers score on all, each of their first six, five or six possessions. So they were down about four scores in the first half, yeah. and they just couldn't really keep up with the running game because 
the defense necessitated it. So like that's how you make the Bears offense one dimensional. Uh, yeah, Less, yeah. Fast like, start. Teams haven't really totally shut down their running game. The Bears have just abandoned their running game a few different times this season, more so out of necessity. And so certainly if the Saints can do that, that's how you make them one dimensional offensively. But sure, you're going to run the ball and they're going to want to stick with it. And it's really been like, yeah, their own penalties backing them up so they can't run the ball. And then being down the scoreboard is backing them up so they can't run the ball. But they really do want to run the ball with and they trust a variety of their backs back there doing it to make to give Tyson Bajan second and seven and third and three instead of second and 10 and third and 12. Well, there you go. Then that just calls into question the New Orleans Saints run defense, which struggled last week. Can they bounce back coming up against the, uh, well, they struggled last week with a couple of big plays given up outside of those big plays though. They, they actually performed okay, but you know, those big plays, those can be the moments that settle a game. So it's something to definitely watch uh, here between the saints and the bears coming up next. We're going to take a look at what it is that the saints and bears need to do in order to get their victories on Sunday. And of course we'll give our predictions as well. Got that coming up for you as we wrap up this crossover edition, locked on bears, locked on saints here on the locked on podcast network, your team every day. This Crossover Thursday prod podcast is brought to you by our friends at Prize Picks, the better way to do daily fantasy sports. Because Prize Picks puts you in complete control. Unlike the other daily fantasy sports platforms where you know, you're setting your lineup and you have to beat a thousand other people's lineup to, to win any money in that, with Prize Picks, it's you versus the projections available. So you could put your football knowledge to the test. You pick two to six players and whether they'll perform above or below their Prize Picks projection, and you can win up to 25 times your money just by making your right picks. Like I'm looking at price picks for this Bears Saints game. And the interesting one for me, Ross, they've got Taysom Hill set at 0 0.5 passing yards. So oh. I, my question for you is, is, do you think he will attempt to pass? You'd have to complete it in order to get his price picks projection. But do you think he will attempt a pass in this game? Yes. Yes, I do. So it's just a matter of can he get a complete <laughs> and one single yard? That's what is essentially what his All price needs. If, in order for you to win on, on, Tays on Taysom Hill. So, Take Ross Jackson's advice. T Taysom Hill will get a pass attempt. It's just a matter of whether he can get a single yard on that attempt. And of course, pick a few other players. You can win big with prize picks. It's a lot of fun. It's easy to play. It really literally takes 60 seconds or less to make your picks. You got to try it for yourself. Head over to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use our promo code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. That's an extra $100 to play with at prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Promo code locked on NFL. Price picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. All right, buddy, wrapping up this crossover Thursday edition. Time to talk about what these two teams need to do to get a win. If you want to keep up to date with everything going on around the rest of the NFL, make sure you're checking out Locked On NFL kickoff on any and all of your favorite Locked On NFL YouTube channels starting live at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Make sure you go and check that out. And of course, if you want to listen in on this game, you can find it by searching Bears or Saints on the Sirius XM app. You might even hear a couple of familiar voices while you're there. So make sure you're going and checking that out as well. All right, Lauren, let's look at the things that, that, that each of these teams need to do uh, to get a win. If you don't mind, I'm gonna, uh, you mind if I kick us off for this one? Absolutely not. Awesome. So the way that I look at this for New Orleans is that the Saints win this game if they don't lose this game, right? Like that, that's really, that's what we're talking about here. And I don't mean that in a way to like throw shade at the Chicago Bears or anything like that. It's just that like, if you're looking at these two teams roster wise, you're looking at these two teams in terms of how they've played most recently and all these other things, the New Orleans Saints should be the better team. The New Orleans Saints should win this game. But what the New Orleans Saints did last week when they were in that situation is that they didn't worry about playing against the Indianapolis Colts philosophically, philosophically and said they played against their standard. And when they played against their standard, they were excellent, especially on the offensive side. So you saw them swallow their ego a lot. They culled all of their play calling down so that they had fewer options in, in specific situations. So you get all the bangers in there and you get a little bit less of the snoozers of plays and stuff like that. They did a fantastic job playing against their standard. I think they need to do the same thing here against the Chicago Bears and not stumble, uh, you know, not stumble on the way to it. it. Yeah, it's sort of the same thing reversed for the Bears, right? It's like mm -hmm. in order for the Bears to win this game, they need the Saints to lose it. Like they need mm -hmm. New Orleans to kind of both meta both like literally and metaphorically like fumble the bag here. Like, like yeah. yeah give it to them a little bit, help them out a little bit, because if you're just going to go like our talent versus your talent, head to head, 
who's got the more talent. The same for the <laughs> better football team. I think we can all pretty well agree that. I think most people in Chicago will look at it and say the same thing. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. you don't have the rookie division two quarterback under center. Yeah, you're probably the better football team. But as much as we love Tyson Bajit, like there's a little more going on in New Orleans right now. And so it takes a little something extra for the for the Bears here. And that's a little bit of land yet. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My listeners have no idea what Lanyap is, Ross. Uh, New Orleans flared to, uh, to our US audience here. We need a little extra mustard on our brat. Is, is there you go. I love it. Relish there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's like Tyson, like Tyson Bajan generally going to be smart. He'll, quick decisions. Generally kind of, th- I mean, he, he makes mistakes, but generally takes care of the football. Good decision making. The Bears want to run the ball, control the clock, make things easy for their quarterback. And that can get you this far you know but then mm-hmm. to win like something's got to push you over the edge so whether that's a special teams touchdown a block punt big play it's or it's turnovers generated by the defense or i guess giveaways from the saints like the bears need something else to win you know they got that against the raiders they got that against the commanders earlier this season they haven't gotten much else of it the rest of the game so if the saints can just get out of their own way and let the bears stumble they should be fine yeah yeah that's, that's got to be the big thing I, I think too many people are talking about this game right now like it's a, oh, the Saints show up and they get a W in the win column. They're five and four. But I, I don't believe that. I think they need to show up and they need to execute their game plan. Like they need to go out there and play a grade A football game against their own standard, right? Uh, against their own grading rubric and stuff like that. I know. I know. You're, you're like, a C might get them. A, yeah. a D, D, D's get degrees. You know what I mean? You can't play <laughs> F football. You'll, you'll lose if you play F football, but a, a C plus might win you. The- <laughs> you still got to right, good. Football. You just got to get all the questions right. Yeah. Well, that's good. I mean, as somebody who can um, who can speak from experience about the ease of coasting on a C plus, uh, <laughs> I think that can work. I think that can work for New Orleans. All right, buddy. What is your score prediction for this matchup between the Bears and the Saints? Yeah, I, I think generally this will be like I'm not expecting a, a major blowout, and the, and the Bears have been really good this season at not like completely giving up even when they're down big. I, I know the spread right now on FanDuel is. Bears are eight and a half point road dogs. And that that has moved quite a bit, too. It was at minus seven when it opened. Yeah. I, well, that, that was I think that was before they fired their running backs coach and have a player holding on requesting a trade and fair, you know, just fair. The latest in a long line of like th- th- this is nothing for the Bears. Season. This is like the 15th most interesting thing that's happened this year. But it, it, <laughs> on the team. I mean, it's not even the first this isn't even the first assistant coach that has left the team for true. Eight right. Years. You know yes. what I mean? It's, it, uh, it's not the first player who's demanded a trade. It's just, it's a whole thing. It, but anyway, um, I, I, I do think that's, that's reasonable. Like, I don't think it's going to be a big, you know, multi-touchdown blowout win for the Saints, but I don't think the Bears are going to make it a nail-biter at the end either. So I've been hovering around like a 23-17, you know, right around there. Some kind of ugly couple of field goals for both teams. Maybe even 23-16 with a lot of field goals. I mean, just something kind of gross like that. Yeah, I love something kind of gross like that. That's exactly what I'm, how I'm ready to do my postcast. Well, that was gross. Uh, no, I don't want to do that. Uh, all right, here's what, I, what I'm calling for the Saints. It, I, don't, I also don't have a double-digit victory. I also don't have the Saints following up on a 30-point game with another 30-point game. They haven't done that since I mentioned that Christmas game uh, where Alvin Kamara ran for six touchdowns. That was a 52-point game followed up by a 30-plus point game against the, the Carolina Panthers to finish the 2020 season. So I, I'm not going to say that they buck the trend just yet. I'm, I am going to say they get close, though, and I am going to have a little bit of a larger margin of victory here. I'm going to take the Saints in this game 28 to about like 20 uh, for the Chicago Bears. That could be, you know, some late scores, things like that, that end up creating a little bit more distance, whatever it might be. Uh, but that's the way that I'm looking at this game. I, I think that New Orleans needs a game like that. Another clean one score when they get in the red zone, convert on third downs. But they don't necessarily need to run the score up to 30 plus points to look good in this game. I think they can come in at under 30. I'm not trying to rewrite history here. I'm not trying to go against the trend here, but they could still do that and look good in the process. Yeah. I, part, I think part of that is just like both these teams are going to want to play some all possession, you know, run up the clock kind of game, and it's just going to go quickly. Like it won't be as high scoring yeah. because. The, the clock will run more between both of these offenses and there just won't be as many total plays run. And then as a result, maybe not as many total points run. So maybe, maybe an argument for the under there, it's set at yeah. 41, which is still, still pretty low, but I think your, your score, there would be over. My score would be slightly under. I can't do the quick, be under. But, but perhaps if, if both these teams end up running the ball uh, quite a bit, my, my score would be slightly under yours is slightly. Yeah. Um, so 
I mean, just a good set. It's a good line by FanDuel, but maybe that's right. Maybe if they if they play some clock control game and both teams run the ball out a bit, uh, there won't, just won't be as many opportunities for a, a higher scoring shootout kind of game. All right, family. One more big thank you to Lauren Cox of Locked On Bears at Cox Sports One. If you want to keep up to date with what's going on with the Bears leading up to this game, follow along with their injury report, all that good stuff. Lauren's got you covered right over there, as well as on Locked On Bears every single Monday through Friday. Appreciate all the everydayers coming out as always to check out another episode and help you get ready for the Saints and Bears matchup. Coming up on later on today's live stream after practice, we're going to be taking a look at the injury report, getting you up to date with everything going on there. Will Michael Thomas be back? I think that's kind of what we expect, or, or not back, but will he be creeping towards full, trying to get healthy from the illness, all those other things. So we'll get all the updates for you uh, in our live show later on. And then the game plan on Friday, breaking down exactly what the New Orleans Saints need to do to get a win against the Chicago Bears. Appreciate all of you everydayers out there making Locked on Saints your first listen of the day every day. And I thank you very much for making us a part of your day, part of your routine for saying yes to me and the show. As always, if you see me, please say hi. And if you need anything else around your New Orleans Saints in between these episodes, make sure you follow me on your favorite social media at Ross Jackson, N-O-L-A. Hit me up. Let me know how the family's doing. Let me know how you're living. Let me know how you're mom and them. And trust you that nation. I'll holla at you.